Hello, uh, welcome to Trains in Vietic. Uh, we got a mystery box in front of us, which is um, all, my uh, all my decoders which I don't use. So I think I need to go through it, bin any which aren't working, and know what I have for future projects. So let's start with the title, then we can talk about how I'm planning to do this project. So to do this project, I have a few tools. I'm going to use the ESU decoder tester and my sprog. So at points, we're going to be split between on the screen there and on the camera. So I'll be capturing both at some point, or we might just be on camera or we might just be on the computer. So let's go and get started. So this is a sprog. The main purpose for this is to program your decoders or read your decoders, but you can run locos with it as well. You have got five inputs. You've got to volt plus, volt minus, track B, track A, and USB on the bottom. You then have two lights, one to show USB power, one to show track power. Um, you can get these quite easily online. They work with quite a bit of software, but I'm going to be using JMRI on the computer as that's free software and does a job. So we now need to connect this. So I got two pre-stripped wires. So they go in trap, plus, trap B and trap K. You just undo the screw on top. And then just do it back up. Same on that one. You need to open it first. Put that in. And then connecting the voltage. Uh, I have this end which I have actually cut off. And you've got a positive and a minus. Minus is a dotty line. So I'll just unscrew these. and take them out. Uh, the connection for this is my uh, one complaint would be nice if it came with a barrel jack. So I'll connect this and come back to you. I found a spare barrel jack and just screwed it on minus and plus and that go through to there. The next thing I need is a decoder tester. Uh, ESU have now came out with a replacement for this, but I'll quickly run through this version. So on the bottom, I have a connector and it doesn't matter which one going to which. So on this board, you've got tracking either through this connector, we can solder the connection on. Then you have two power indicators. Then you have LEDs here for front light, rear light, one, two, three, and four. So that's up to four functions. Then you have eight pin decoder socket, six pin decoder socket, straight wire socket, 21 pin socket, a next eight, next 18 and a plus 
22 which can be used with several for different size plus decoders. Then you have this switch here which is something important to be aware of. This decoder can test both a logo sound 3.5 and then 4 and above. They both have different speaker requirements but correct, uh, selecting for switch correctly you can select for speaker but if your decoder come pre with the speaker pre-wired put it in for off selection then you can go to not to do any problems final thing you got is a motor with a flywheel so this means you can actually test for motor uh, motor function so we can now connect this up so put your wire in for home and tighten it. Put your other wire in for hole, tighten it. One other thing is you've got some nice plastic standoffs. So if I had space I'd actually have this set up permanently as a test bench. So I can now apply power and check everything works. That haven't lit up, but it might do when I connect to a USB cable. And I got the power wired the wrong way around. So I'll come back in a second. So I've now powered this up and the computer's now doing stuff. So I'll go over to the computer in a second and then we can start playing with it. So we're now on the computer. And we have some basic settings to do. So we've got system manufacturer, which is Brog. We have system connected, which is Brog. And then we connect for command station. And then we should press save. So this now come up again. I press OK, get for the logo, and then we can go on to surface trap mode. So I don't have a decoder on the system, so if I press identify, you can see it's then power to the track, and it come up with no logo just down there. So I'll go and make this bigger, and now I'll go and get to decoder. So if I go into my box of tricks and try this decoder to start off with. This is a 21 pin decoder. So you just push that on like that. And then we can go and tell the computer to identify. And you can see red light, green lights on that. Lights flashing on for decoder. And now we can see more information. So we can now press read from decoder. And it's a ESU decoder. So you have this list of all the decoders it could be. And I got a feeling it's going to be this one. And then we can click on uh, which button is it. We can send a factory, a factory reset to the decoder. 
and now we can read read everything so you can see the decoders doing bits and as this is happening the software is taking over information so uh, you can hear the motor doing bits the light flashing and then eventually the button will start spinning on the computer. So we can carry on with this. So for the Dakota family is a ESU pilot. It's a lot pilot O2, is that what Batman used for a while? You have a local ID and then from this you can set up quite a bit of information. So this is quite powerful software. And I'm going to run out of battery in a moment. So I'll come back once uh, this has finished uh, reading. So a few bits I want to point out from this. You'll notice that this was grinding rather than running when it was uh, talking. That's because it was pulsing the signal so that the decoder can read back. And then on the software down at the bottom, it's say, uh, okay now just here, but that did say, uh, oh, the CV it was reading. So we can see what functions it have. Uh, you can assign a image for the loco. You can see the address and we can change her address by just putting in with a keyboard what number we want. So if we go for five, we can then uh, tell it to write changes, but we'll leave that at three. And you can also set long and short address, so that's nice. You got uh, things to set acceleration speed, deceleration speed, de uh, load power, and several other bits. Basic speed control, so you've got start voltage, maximum voltage, medium speed, and maximum speed. Then have a speed table so you can adjust for speed. You don't have function mapping on this. Then you have lighting, so you can adjust the lighting modes. Analog control. Consignments. Then you have a few others which you can't on here. And some decoders have additional functions. So now we've got that one. We can close that. We can now see if that's actually working. So if we go onto throttle, new throttle, set for address to three, and set. If we turn this on, we can then just test the decoder. So you can see the decoder's now running. Then we can turn on for light and swap direction and then just turn on for functions. Two you can see is a momentary function. Three, four, five don't exist on this decoder. So that's nice and easy. And then you've got to release it so that you can then carry on controlling it. So I'll close this and then we go back into surface mode and read another decoder. So this is an old decoder. decoder. I haven't done something proper so I need to bring back the throttle new throttle and turn it off. So that's now in for off mode. 
so we can take the decoder off. Always be careful when moving decoders. Don't put too much force on. Then to put the 8 pin decoder on, we make sure that the orange is to the left. You've got to dot there. And then just push that in. So let's go and read the decoder. So we go and read from decoder. And that's an easy command, one function decoder. So we can load that up and then we can uh, read, read the whole sheet. Uh, as you can see, the CVs at the bottom are coming up. So, uh, this will take a few moments, but address is set to 8, and that's a short address, which we can see just here. And you can see the pulsing on the motor. I don't have any NETS 18 decoders, and I don't have any plus sets decoders. But this board is one of the most useful items I have. Something else I do have is some old speakers. These won't work with um, uh, newer decoders. But if I get one out, I can show you how to tell uh, what it is. So on the back, it say it's a hundred ohms, and um, that's for the loco sound three point five decoders. So I'll put that back in its bag. It's always worth having a good selection of uh, old decoders about. And as you never know when you buy yourself a train. So this is decoder 8. Function labels. You can see this is quite a basic one. So you can't really do much changes to this decoder. You can adjust for the lighting. And that's about it. So we'll save that. Okay, we won't save that. And then we'll swap for uh, advanced decoder. So best way to get this out is to just wiggle it. And that comes out. If you have lights on here, don't move the decoder. So the next decoder I've got is a Hornby Sapphire decoder. And I got this as a really good bargain. So first nice thing about this is you have a wire so that it can either be 8 pin or 21 pin. I'll do for 21 pin. And you can see only some of the 21 pins are actually used. Click on quite nicely. And if we go back to the decoder of the computer, we can click read decoder. And that's a Hornby Sapphire. So you can see there's a lot more function on this. And then we can read for complete decoder. So I'll come back once this has read. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this informative. Remember to like, share, comment and to subscribe. And I'll see you all on Wednesday at 8 o'clock for my weekly live stream. Thank you very much, Richard.